good evening, good evening, good evening, AWPM family and friends. Welcome, welcome, welcome to tonight's Bible study. We're getting into some serious stuff. So we need you to open up your spirits and begin to worship. We are here with your senior pastor, Marcus Rogers. I'm your first lady, Nikaila Rogers. Love you. It's about to get big. Hallelujah. Amen. Good evening, good evening, and good evening. Hallelujah. Abiding Word Prophetic Ministries, by the grace of God, we're back at it again. I want to say thank you so much for tuning in. It's going to be a powerful, powerful time in the Lord tonight. We want you to free yourself, release yourself, get ready to receive. Jesus has a word for you. He loves you, and he's coming to meet you and impart some things into you tonight. So open your heart, open your mind, invite somebody, invite somebody. Hallelujah. Just enter into this time of worship as we prepare our spirits for the word tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. The future is big. God, he's working a miracle. Welcome, welcome, welcome tonight, y'all. Tonight's word is going to dig deep into what's going on with a lot of people right now. A lot of people don't know what's going on, but God has been talking and he has revealed some things and we are going to talk about it tonight. So open your hearts in worship. Prepare room for the Lord, okay? We want you to prepare room. 
in your worship because we know that this is going to touch your situation. We want you to be active. As a matter of fact, right now, send this message out. Go ahead and share this service before we even get started. Share the service right now. You don't have to miss anything. Share the service. It takes less than a minute. Share this service so that it can be a blessing to somebody else. Okay? Go ahead. We're waiting. We're waiting. I've already shared the service, even though I'm teaching the service. I've already shared it. I want to see more than one share. Okay? Y'all share the service to be a blessing to somebody because God is going to explain what a lot of us are going through tonight. And so we are about to begin our next worship song. Amen. Praise God. Let's go. Cut it up, baby. We want to talk to people tonight who maybe feel things are hopeless, dreams have been shattered, things look dark. Tonight we want to declare to you it's not over. It's not it's not finished, it's not ending, it's only the beginning, God is in death, all things are new. Cause you're closer than you think you are You're closer than you've been to me before So look to the sky Help us on the way It's not over No It's not finished But it's not ending It's not ending It's only the beginning when God is in Jesus, Jesus at the center of it all, all things are new. All things are new. All things are new. All things are new. I feel something starting to move. I feel something starting to shift. Something is moving. Turning your turning around. Seasons are changing. Seasons are changing. Take 
speaking of some of your marriage. I'm speaking of some of your wayward sons and daughters. I'm speaking of some of your unsaved spouses, not over. When God is here, I'm speaking of some of your health tonight. I'm speaking of some of your finances tonight. So I come in on time. So I come in on time. To make all things new. It's not old. It's not old. So God says so. So God says so. So I come in on time. So I come in on time. Hallelujah, God. It's not over. That's right, Reverend Booker. It's not over. No matter what you've been dealing with, no matter what you've been going through, it's not over. When God is in it. Thank you, Lord. Where you're at, say, when God is in it. When God is in it. When God is in it. Tell the devil right now, God is in it. God is in it. Hallelujah. God is in it. Despite what the doctor said, despite what your husband said, despite what your wife said, God is in it. When God says it's over, that's when it's over. God is in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your situation is not hopeless. Your situation is not over. Come on, Sister Regina. When God is in it. It's not over for your baby. It's not over for your grandchild. I don't care what they said about their health. I don't care if they said it. I say it in the name of Jesus. I don't care if they said that it is a terminal illness. I don't care if they said it's a lifelong condition that's going to have to be dealt with. I shut that down in the name of Jesus. Is that what God said to you? Or is it what they said to you? Is it what they said to you? Is it what they said to you? I'm feeling somebody's emotions right now. Somebody's in turmoil. Somebody is in turmoil right now. Because of what somebody else said to you. But it was not what God said to you. It was not what God said to you. Stop yourself right now. Stop the thoughts right now. Your thoughts have been volatile. Your emotions have been a melting pot. It's not what God said to you. It's what they said to you. Come on, Mother Angela Bailey. When God is in it, 
Our brother Chris is going to be okay. God is going to restore his life. God is going to restore him in the name of Jesus. He's going to restore the whole family. I know you face some devastating situations, but that is what this word is about tonight. The wilderness experience. The wilderness experience. Because we all are facing our own wilderness experience. But tonight, we're going to get some understanding. Because we're going to come out on top of this thing. But you got to know what you're facing. You got to know the terrain you're walking through to be able to overcome it. Some things you got to go over. Some things you got to go under. Some things you just got to go around. Other things got to blow down. But we're all being tested right now. We're all being tested. We're being tested, elect lady. We're being tested by fire. Why? Because we are in the refiner's fire. We've got to be refined for this next level. It's hard. I know it's hard, people of God. I know it's hard. And I say it with tears in my eyes. God has been talking to me. He's been dealing with me. I've been before him. And this is a word. This is a word I didn't even think that was going to be coming out of my mouth. I know I've heard many other people talk about the wilderness. But trust and believe, this first lady ain't listened to nobody else's message about it. I've been in God's face about it. I've been in his face about it. I don't want nobody else's sermon about it. I want what God has to say to me about it. So that he can bless you. Hallelujah. Give some hearts. Give some likes. Share this message. Because I'm telling you, it's going to bless you and it's going to bless who you're connected to. Just because you share it, somebody's going to listen to it and they're going to be blessed by it. All of us are going through a wilderness experience. We got to come out of what they have said and go into what he has said. What has God spoken to you? Despite what we're going through, what did he say? Because what God said don't change a thing. What he has spoken about you, he has not changed. He has not changed his mind concerning you. But man changes everything. But God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He is the God that changes not. Y'all done got me started already, Jesus. We thank you, God. It's not over. It's not over for you, Regina. It's not over for you, Mother Angela. It's not over for you, elect lady. It's not over for you, Reverend Booker. It's not over for any of you. It's not over. It's not over for you, Chris Bailey. It's not over for you, Robert Bailey. It's not over for any of you. It's not over. It's not over. Somebody type, it's not over. It's not over. Hallelujah, Jesus, it's not over. If it's not what God said, it's not what it is. Somebody type, it's not over. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Come on. Come on. That's right. You're just getting started. Just getting started. Come on, it's not over, Reverend Booker. It ain't over, Regina. That's right. We're just getting started. You speaking, you in the message. We just getting started. Hallelujah. Pick up your countenance. Let God pick it up. Let him encourage you. Be strengthened in the Lord tonight. It's not over. You could cut it down, Pastor. Yes, yes, Mother Angela. It's not over. Oh, oh, but it's just getting started. It's just getting started. Your testimony about Chris, just confirmation. Just confirmation that this word is on time, on point for what God is saying. I've been seeking God about what he wanted to go into next. Because as you know, we just came out of the personal boundary series. I never thought that he would have me come into this particular arena, especially this fast. 
But confirmation, y'all, we dealing with the wilderness experience. So you want to go ahead, Pastor? Well, praise God, everyone. Hallelujah. We're already there. The presence of God is already here. The spirit of the Lord is already moving. So we're not going to tarry on it. We're just going to go into a quick word of prayer and flow right in. And we'll do some of the announcements and things after. But the waters are already troubled and God is already speaking and your hearts are already primed. So wherever you are, if you're able, just bow your heads. We want to go before the Lord in a quick word of prayer and we're going to release what God has for us tonight. Yes. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we just love you and we thank you. Thank you for allowing us to be in your presence yet another time, Father. You know what we have need of even before we ask tonight. So, Father, we just ask you, use this time for the glory of your great name. Minister to your people. Cause them to hear the voice of God tonight in the name of Jesus. Give us eyes to see, Father. Give us ears to hear. Let our hearts be receptive tonight. Cause us to understand what the Spirit of God is saying to the church on tonight, Father. Let there be healing. Let there be strength. Let there be comfort. Lord, let light and revelation flow forth in a mighty way in the name of Jesus Christ. Touch your people on tonight. We thank you, God, that time with you is time well spent. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ over this service, Father. Meet your people right where they are. Take this word and divide it, Father. Meet them at their point of need. Meet them at their point of breakthrough and blessing. But we just call all things good. We call it well, and we thank you for allowing us to be here. Pray for the woman of God, Father. We pray that you give her utterance, clarity, understanding, and boldness in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the marvelous light of God shine upon this service, Father. Wrap your loving arms around us. Huddle us in. Speak to us. Talk to us. Minister to us, Father. We are here to hear tonight. And we just love you and we praise you. And we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. We call it done in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say amen tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, we're grateful for you too, Mama. We're grateful for you too, Mama Angela. Hallelujah, Lord. I thank God for each and every one of you that are online tonight. I see we have six viewers tonight. We thank God for each and every one of you. Just know that your presence with us tonight is an encouragement to our ministry. Know that. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Sister Regina. We love you, always have. Thank you so much. Elect Lady, we love you dearly. You know that. Reverend Charles, you've always been such an encouragement. We love you. Cousin Shelton, we love you. I mean, just, y'all about to make me cry on another note. <laughs> but thank you so much for being with us tonight because this right here, is a fatherly huddle. Daddy is pulling us in to let us know what we're dealing with, to let us know what we're going through. Some of us have been dealing with deaths in the family, difficulty in finances, difficulty with jobs, difficulty in relationships. I mean, you name it. Whatever your particular difficulty is, God is addressing what the situation is tonight. Oh, we love you too, Sister Regina. You have to know that God loves you enough to tell you what's going on. He doesn't keep you in the dark forever. He just keeps you hidden for a minute, but he comes around and he tells you what's going on and then he expects you to do something with it, amen. He's a father and a teacher, rabbi. And we all know that teachers eventually give tests. So tonight, please get out your notebook. You got to write some stuff down for me. You got to write some stuff down, not just for me. You know, I'm a teacher, so I love to know that you've taken notes. Amen. But Father wants for you to keep this information with you. You hear me? So pens, paper, just get you a piece of paper. I'm not even going to hold you too long tonight because I need you to get this in your system. We're laying foundation because you've got to understand what the wilderness is before we go into it. Amen. 
Come on. Everybody ready? Let me get some I'm ready so we can go in to what the wilderness is. Because y'all, we dealing with the wilderness experience and it is not a game. Come on, let me see some I'm ready. Let's go. I wanna see it. I wanna know my people are with me. All right, Sister Regina said, I'm ready. Michelle, love you, love you, love you. Hey, hey God bless you. Yes. Praise God. Yes, you already know. Come on, y'all, come on. Come on, Mama Angela. She said, ready, I'm ready. That's right. Come on, woman of God. Yes, come on, my people. Come on. We ready for this because you about to get some answers to your frustrations and to different things you've been feeling and experiencing. Amen. So we finna start. Amen. Lord, make this clear and easy to understand for your people. Practical insight and application in Jesus name. So when I say wilderness, what is the wilderness? And we're going to look at it first biblically. We're going to understand what the wilderness is biblically. Oh, the title of the message is The Wilderness Experience. I've said it a couple of times, so <laughs> hope you caught it. But The Wilderness Experience. And we love you too, Michelle. <laughs> yes, The Wilderness Experience. Amen. And know that this is part one because we're laying foundation. Like I said, we're not even going to hold you too long tonight. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Whew. All right, now, what is the wilderness biblically? Amen. In the book of Exodus, chapter 7, verse 16, we're going to look at the word wilderness. I'm going to read it to you. It's in the book of Exodus, chapter 7, verse 16. Now, I'm going to read it out of the expanded Bible. Amen. Amen. And it says, tell him the Lord, the God of the Hebrews sent me to you. He said, let my people go worship, serve me in the desert wilderness until now you have not listened. Amen. So now the word wilderness in this text in the Hebrew is the word midbar, midbar. It's spelled M-I-D-B-A-R. And it means uninhibited land, fit for feeding a flock. Uninhibited land, fit for feeding a flock. It also means wilderness figuratively. It also means pasture where their cattle are driven and by implication the wilderness is a desert. I'll read it again, but just so you know, pastor is getting the information down for you in the chat. So again, the word wilderness in Hebrew is the word midbar, and it's spelled M-I-D-B-A-R. And it means uninhibited land fit for feeding a flock. Wilderness figuratively. Pasture, whether cattle are driven and by implication, the wilderness is a desert. Come on, the lick lady. Amen. Come on. We're going in. All right. So from that understanding, 
we're going to move down now because now we see that the wilderness is also known as a what? Desert. So we're going to look at desert. Desert is uninhabited and <clears throat> desolate. Come on, y'all. We got to get this down because you're going to understand exactly what you're looking at and what you're dealing with. So desert is uninhabited and desolate. It is also a dry, barren area of land that is characteristically desolate, waterless, and without vegetation. A situation or area considered dull and uninteresting. I'll read that to you again. And remember, pastor is getting it in the chat for you. A desert is uninhabited and desolate. A dry, barren area of land that is characteristically desolate, waterless, and without vegetation. It is a situation or area considered dull and uninteresting. Awesome. Now, also, I want you to take note that it is known for deserts to deal with extremely high temperatures during the day, but extremely low temperatures during the night. <laughs> Regina, <laughs> amen. So yes, take note of that. When we're talking about a desert, the desert doesn't look anything positive. But look at everything that's going on now. It is known for deserts to deal with extremely high temperatures during the day, but extremely low temperatures during the night. Amen. Amen, Regina. Amen. Now, we also saw that the wilderness was also a pasture. What is a pasture? Biblically, a feeding place. Amen. A feeding place. That was too easy. A pasture is a feeding place. Hold on, we've got to give a shout out. Apostle Bogus is on the line right now. Apostle, Apostle Bogus? Yeah. Apostle, good evening, sir. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. Apostle Bogus. Amen. Good we evening, love sir. you. Amen. Thank you for your time. Thank you for stopping <laughs> with us. Yes. Continue, ma'am. God bless you, sir. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Miss you. Okay. They messed up a whole moment. Okay. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But yes, yes, yes. Amen. So, again, the pasture is a feeding place. <clears throat> Amen. Now, the wilderness is home to some of the most dangerous terrain. Wild and untamed creatures outside of civilization. Come on, y'all, because we going there. Y'all know we going there. The wilderness is home to some of the most dangerous terrain. Dangerous terrain. You might mess around, step into some quicksand. You have no idea what is out there. It could be covered up with grass, but it's tricky. Dangerous terrain. Wild and untamed creatures that live outside of civilization. Amen. However, however, this is what gets me. You with me, mama. Amen. However, the wilderness, this very wilderness that we are describing as a desert, which you would consider to be a very uninhabitable place. 
God found that the wilderness was the perfect place. He found it fit and had chosen it to drive his flock of people into. Do you hear me? God has chosen the wilderness as the perfect place fit to drive his flock of people into for the sake of doing three things. For the sake of doing three things. And it was to feed us, to teach us. Oh, excuse me. I'm going too far ahead. Let me, let me step back just a notch. We're going to go with feeding, testing, and transporting. Again, the three things that God wanted to deal with us about in the wilderness was feeding, testing, and transporting. Marquita, hey, honey. See, y'all messing me up today. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Oh, Lord. Oh, is it feeding, Regina. Is it feeding, transporting? Yes. The three things God has deemed this uninhabitable place worthy of for us was to get us there so that he could feed us, test us, and transport us. Now, I'm going to explain that. When I say feeding, I'm saying he was teaching. To feed is to teach. When he spoke to Peter and he said, if you love me, you will do what? You will feed my sheep. He didn't mean here, just give them a piece of bread, give them a piece of corn, give them a piece of fish. Teach them. Teach them what? All the things that I've taught you. You can see that in the Great Commission. Teach them. Come on, y'all. Y'all know this is the Lord because he's dealing with all of us right now. So he was feeding the people of God when he drove them out there. After he had delivered them from Egypt and drove them into the wilderness. He began feeding them, which was teaching them his ways. And how to have a real relationship with him. Again, feeding them, which was teaching them his ways and how to have a real relationship with him. The second one, testing. Now, y'all, this one might hurt a little bit, but this is what it is. In the wilderness, God tests us and he tested them and it was sending them and us through an ordeal required, required, I don't think y'all heard me, sending them through and sending us through an ordeal required as proof of conformity with a set of beliefs. Come on, y'all. This one digs deep. So when God is testing you, he is sending you through an ordeal. He's sending you through a conflicted situation. He's sending you through some situations in order to prove, and it's required. It's not that you can go above it, under it, around it, underneath it. You can't do any of that. You have to go through it. You have to go through an ordeal. It is required. It is required. You can't get out of it because you're a favorite. God has no favorites. Everybody has to go through it. It is required as proof. Your testing is going to prove that you got 
everything that he was teaching. That you really got, that you really understood what it was he was trying to get across to you. So again, the testing is sending us through an ordeal required as proof of conformity with a set of beliefs they were subjected to, to be revealed by. We are subjected to test to be revealed by. You are subjected to particular tests that you are going through in order to be revealed by it. Are you really, do, do you really believe what you say you believe? The things you teach, do you really believe in those things? Here's a test, let's see. It's required, it's required to prove you. None of us get out of this. It's required to prove you, to prove that you are, you are authentic, your authenticity. Are you real? Everybody want to throw around, I'm 100. Are you 100 in your faith? Mm -hmm. The things you want to go around and preach and teach to other people, can you stand on it right now? Now, one of the other things that God took them into the wilderness for was to transport them, transport them. What does this mean? He was transporting them through the wilderness to their next level of blessing and living. He was taking them somewhere. He was taking them to Canaan. He was not taking them to the wilderness to live. He took them to the wilderness to get along with them so they could learn his ways, so they could learn how to have real relationship with them, so they could be tested on the basis of the things he taught them. But they were being transported to the place of promise. They were to get to Canaan. They were not to stay in the wilderness. They were being transported. Trans. Ported. Transported. So your wilderness is not a stopping place. Like he said, although I walk through the valley. Now I camp out in the valley. No, I walk through the wilderness. I don't camp out in the wilderness. Somebody make sure you share this message because it's got to bless somebody else because I'm telling you, if it's hitting it for you, it's going to hit it for somebody else because somebody is dealing with the wilderness experience. Thank you, Marquita, honey. Thank you, Regina. So, y'all, now we're going to tie all of this together. We're going to tie all of this understanding together about what the wilderness experience is make sure you write this down you get this down for yourself because you're going to find yourself in this situation somewhere identify your location because now you're going to get power the wilderness experience can be defined as a spiritual experience that you will experience in the soul and natural realm. Now it's birthed from a place of the spirit because God is the one who is offering it. He's conducting it. But you're going to experience it in your soul. You're going to feel some things and you're going to experience some natural effects around you. It is a strategic period of time that God tests you on that which he has taught you to get you ready to receive your promise. Come on, y'all. The wilderness experience can be defined as a spiritual experience that you will experience in the soul and natural realm. It's birth from the spirit. Why? Because God is conducting it. He is conducting it. It is a requirement. None of us can escape. 
It is required to prove us. Do we believe what we say we believe? Or are we just giving mouth service? Like God said, the people, they mouth say this, but their hearts are far from me. Do you believe what you say you believe? Now's your time. Now is your time. It is a strategic period of time that God tests you. Strategic period of time that God tests you on that which he has taught you to get you ready to move right into your promise. Now, during this wilderness experience, take note of this. Find yourself here, y'all. During the wilderness experience, you will experience feeling desolate. What did we say the wilderness was? It's a desert, a desolate place. Desolate means feeling misery, unhappiness, and loneliness. <laughs> you will deal with feeling dry and barren. Also the descriptive words of the desert. Dry meaning unexciting and dull. You can become emotionally unresponsive. So things that used to move you, maybe used to touch your heart, you've become a bit cold. You've become a bit distant. This is what's happening as you're going through your wilderness experience. Barren, meaning unfruitful in your efforts. You know you're a hard worker. You know you go hard. You know you push. You know you support other people, but everything you seem to do, it's not bearing any fruit. And it don't make sense. And it's causing you frustration. You're in a wilderness. Experience. What has God taught you? That maybe you're not picking up on. That you're not grabbing hold of. Cleaving to. That's going to get you through. This wilderness. You're going to experience the feeling of being waterless. The lacking of God's word. Lacking the water. The moisture of God's word in you. Oh, my Lord. Lacking his word, you're thirsting for it. But haven't yet been filled. Sometimes because of not even realizing it. That. It's your soul. It's what your soul and your spirit are crying out for because you're so distracted by everything else going on. You've become waterless. You've become dry. You don't even realize that this is what's happening to you. You don't realize this is what's going on. You're in a wilderness experience. You will also feel like there's no vegetation in your life. This is signs of progress, productivity, and prosperity. It seems like you, you can't simply just excel past your former position. You feel so stagnant. You're dealing with a wilderness experience. It's okay, Regina, honey. This is a lot of people struggle. You don't even realize that the things that you're feeling are because it's tied to this particular place. Hey, Samantha, honey. Hey, Vanessa, honey. My Lord, I pray that this word is blessing all of you. You feel like there's no vegetation in your life. You, you're dealing with no signs of progress and productivity and prosperity and it's frustrating the life out of you because you know you're giving all you can and you swear you're committing your works onto the Lord so it, it should be succeeding. 
you're dealing with a wilderness experience. Now, to top that off, you end up dealing with confrontations with spiritually wild and untamed people that couldn't give two cents about your walk with God. Because according to the word, they're creatures of instinct anyway. And that would be according to 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 12. So here we are dealing with the beast of the field. Creatures of instinct. They don't have a relationship with God, don't want nothing to do with God, and they want to do their best to derail you. You're dealing with the wilderness experience. You're dealing with it. You're dealing with it. And you're frustrated and you don't know what to do. That's why this word is coming to you. In the wilderness experience, we experience also some dangerous high temperature moments. I know all of you can... Uh, I know you can identify with these, you know, the too hot to handle situations, the ready to blow up, fly off the handle, fight and ask questions later situations. You know how that goes. Yeah. I ain't the only one who don't want to snatch somebody's eyelashes out. OK, I'm just saying. Extremely high temperatures. Wilderness experience. You've got to pay attention to what you're going through. But we also experience those extremely low temperatures. And a lot of us have been dealing with those. Loss of jobs. Loss of friendships. That we thought we'd have for life. Loss of loved ones. We feel gone too soon. Extreme lows. Extreme lows. Mama Angela, I know you there. For what happened to Chris, an extreme low. An extreme low. Wilderness experience. But God wants everybody online tonight. Let me tell you. God wants you to know that he did not create you to break you. Your wilderness experience he is using to develop you. Your power is not in your fight. It is in your submission. It's a process of refinement and it can be hot, extremely high temperatures. But God will give you a cooling off period. I'm trying to tell you. I'm telling you. He's taking you through a process of refinement to get the old way out of you so that he can establish the brand new in your life. What did we say the wilderness is for? Transporting. Transporting you. Transporting you. God loves you too much to leave you where you are. He's not going to take you to the desert. He's not going to take you to the wilderness and leave you there. He's taking you for the purpose of teaching you. He needs you to... There's some things I can't even touch tonight yet. But this series right here is going to bring to light everything you need to understand about your wilderness experience survival guide. I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you. God wants to transport you to your promise, but first he's got to teach you and test you. He's got to teach you, then test you before he can transport 
you. You've got to pass the test. God doesn't teach us and then transport us. He doesn't skip the process like a lot of us would love to. I'm telling you, it would be wonderful. How many of us would love to fail and go to the next grade? But how many of us know that that will set us up for failure if you don't get what you need to get at the level that you're at? I'm trying to tell you, he's got to teach us, then test us. He's going to do it. It's required. Then he will transport us to our promise. I'm trying to tell you. The question is, will you actually submit to this process? Because the wilderness experience it's not a game and you cannot faint, even though you may grow weak. Like he said, don't grow weary in well-doing. You have to be willing to stand when you want to fall, when you want to collapse, oh God. When you want to collapse, when you want to give up, when you're feeling lonely, when you're feeling left behind, when you feel like you were my friend, but you betrayed me, you left me. Will you still stand for God? Because this is the test. Will you continue to worship? Will you continue to serve him? Part of going through this wilderness experience is feeling those particular emotions that I just spoke of. And um, you're going to have to fight through all of those feelings in order to come out on top. You're going to have to. It's not easy, but you can do it. You were built to last. God didn't make you to break you. He's just developing you. He's killing the flesh. He's killing that flesh. Oh, I know it burns. I know it hurts. If somebody talked to you crazy, you want to go ahead and clap back at them. But you've got to stand your ground and you've got to do the honorable thing. You can't keep failing that test. You can't keep failing those tests. God has got to teach you, then test you to prove you. To transport you to your place of promise. The place you keep saying, God, I'm ready for it. I want it. You've got to let him have his way. And you do it through submission to the mission, through the wilderness experience. Amen. Amen. That's right, Marquita, built to last, built to last. So the truth is, is that many of us literally are in the middle of a wilderness experience right now, right now. And if that is you, please, please lower your head with us and let's pray together tonight. Amen. Pastor, we need to pray. <clears throat> well, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just come before you, Father. We just thank you for your word, God. Your word always leads to answers. It leads to life. And by obeying your word, God, you said that we will find life. So, Father, let us find life tonight to find the strength to yield and submit to your will, to your way, God through this experience, through this wilderness experience that we are enduring. God, help us, strengthen us, help us to squeeze down that flesh, to push that flesh down, God, that we will be led of the spirit, that we would seek and just have such a desire to run after you, God, 
because you know it's been hard, God. Some of, the, some of us have lost jobs. We're dealing with situations with our children, God. We're hurting. We're broken, God. We've been betrayed. We've been battered. We've been bruised. God, we're tired of feeling stagnant. We're tired of feeling lonely. We're tired of desolation. We're tired of isolation. Father, help us through this wilderness experience, God. Help us, Lord Jesus. When it's dark, give us light, God. Help us, God. You are our way. You are the way, the only way, God. And we seek your help tonight. We seek your help. We seek your love, God. And we ask for forgiveness, Father, of trying to do it our way, Father, because we got frustrated and we didn't want to wait anymore. God, we ask for forgiveness. Forgive each and every one of us, Father, and strengthen us. Help us to start the test over, God. That which you've taught us, God, may we put it to use like we've never put it to use before. Help us, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Sorry, y'all. Hey, Sean. Love you, bro. Um, everybody, thank you so much, Samantha, everybody, Charles, everybody, thank you so much for um being with us tonight. I think all of us were able to truly, truly identify with the different conflicting emotions we've been dealing with on the inside. Um, maybe it's not the charging. Um I pray that you are strengthened by this word tonight. I really pray you are. You know, God wanted all of us to get answers for what we've been dealing with, for what we've been going through. And um, I've just been before God, just been seeking him about what he wanted to say, because I don't believe in speaking unless he says something. I don't have time to waste your time. And I definitely don't want to waste his. So... Thank you so much for spending your evening here with us. Like I said, we didn't want to hold you too long tonight, but um, please, we want to give you an opportunity um, to give. Uh, please, you know, that's the kingdom way. It's God's way. Not trying to take anything from you. We're not forcing anything out of your hands. This isn't Money Hungry Ministries. Um, if you would love to be a blessing to the word, to the ministry, Please, we give through Cash App right now. Our ministry Cash App is dollar sign A W P M. No amount too big, no amount too small, okay? And we appreciate everything that you send our way. We appreciate it because we are able to be a blessing to the people in our community, Lord. We are being able to bless the elders with doctor visits and everything. So thank you guys so much for everything you guys have given it. Y'all have no idea. I'm trying not to cry more. <laughs> but um, thank you for everything. Thank you for holding us up in prayer if you're praying for us. Thank you for supporting us by just coming and, you know, cheering on the word. Being blessed by the word. That means most to us. Um. So please, if you're able to give, do that. But if you have not given your life to God, or if you want to rededicate your life, please, 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 please let us know. And we'll say a quick prayer right now because lives being saved is what matters. It's, it's top kingdom priority. That's what matters to us more than anything. We need you to get understanding and we need you to get salvation. Amen. So just say a quick prayer. Um, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. We recognize that we are sinners, God. Oh, and we are in need of your grace. We thank you that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. We realize that we're sinners 
and we need the blood that Jesus shed. So we ask that you would cover our lives, provide a covering for us, cleanse us of our sins and make us brand new. Receive us into your kingdom. In the precious name of Jesus, we thank you for entrance. Thank you, In Jesus' holy name we pray. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. So, y'all, thank you so much. You, If you dedicated your life to God for the first time, please let us know. And if you rededicated your life just as awesome, please let us know. That means everything to us. Send us a direct message or send it to our ministry email even, okay? And that's... Um, Oh, Lord, I'm so flushed at the moment. Our ministry email is AWP. No, what was it? Mm. Yeah, AWPMIN21 at gmail.com. So please send it in to us. Let us know that you gave your life to Christ or you rededicated. Please let us know or send us by direct message on here. We'd love to know your story. Amen. Amen. You did a wonderful job. Hallelujah. What a blessing. Amen. Amen. When the anointing of God is flowing, we just step aside. Hallelujah. Um, we want to thank each and every one of you for joining us tonight. Thank you for your prayers, your love, and your support. What a wonderful, wonderful word. We thank God. He shows his mercy to us. We always say when God sees you struggling, when God sees you going through, he sends you a word. He sends a word your way to help and bless and encourage you. And we just, I'm just blessed. I'm just blessed tonight. So um, if y'all would just help me, we just want to pray for First Lady. And we're going to release you in Jesus' name. Please do be reminded, um, we are here on Sundays as well. Sunday morning <laughs> service, hallelujah. We're just, we're online for the moment. God is leading, God is guiding. So if you can join us every Sunday morning, we're here at 10 a.m. Hallelujah, we have online service as well. And please do come back. Invite somebody, tell somebody, every Christian, we pilgrimage through this journey. It doesn't matter how much favor you're walking in. It doesn't matter how blessed you are. It doesn't matter how much you know you do or don't do. You've got to pass through that wilderness yeah. and sometimes several times through your yes. journey. Hallelujah. Yes. It doesn't mean you're wrong. It doesn't mean you're mm -hmm. wicked. The spirit of God led Jesus Christ himself into the wilderness Amen. it said it's the place of passage it's the place yes. of testing yes. hallelujah so just be encouraged along this walk of faith in your journey god is always for you he's taking you by the hand and leading you through some things yes. so um we just want to if you wouldn't mind we just want to bless the woman of god thank you for the word tonight and father we just love you and we thank you we pray for the woman of God. We pray for your vessel tonight. We just ask you to pour more grace, wisdom, understanding, and clarity into her. Continue to use it for your glory, Father. Keep her ears close to your lips, Father. In the name of Jesus, we plead the blood of Jesus over her. From the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, we pray refreshing, rest, that you would pour back virtue, Father. In the name of Jesus, keep her safe. Keep her house safe. Keep her family safe. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Everybody, Lord. we love you. We love you. We love you. Marquita, it was an honor to see you on here tonight. You have no idea. Seriously, sis. If I could hug you, I would right now. I'm hugging you. I'm hugging you. All of you. All of you. All of you. All of you going to get some hugs and kisses. Amen. But people of God, if you're able, please do. Please do share the video. Um, share it because I mean you never know what a person's going through. Yes. You know, we smile and we bear down and we yes. do what we need to do. But you don't know the wilderness somebody's in. You don't know the dry places and the desolation. Yes. That's why your words of encouragement and your kindness and your obedience is so important that you smile and have that joy and mm -hmm. reach out, be the light, be the door. Yes. Encourage, you know, somebody to come to Jesus just being who you are. <laughs> Bible said, let your light so shine before man that they will yes. see your good works and they will glorify God. Hallelujah. Yes. God is looking to water you mm. so you can water someone else Come on. and help them through their wilderness. Come hallelujah. On. We're here for each other. Yes. If we all band together, hallelujah, you said that, that wilderness is a place of extreme temperatures. Yes. So when it's cold, sometimes the only heat you get is by banding, heat. hallelujah, by That's banding right. together. That's what we're doing. So we thank you. Uh, this community of faith and this great body of believers for joining us tonight. And again, we'll be back Sunday morning, 10 a.m. 
and Wednesday at 7 p.m. Yes. Shoot us a line if you'd like to become a member, if you'd like more information about this ministry. We are on the website, hallelujah. That is Abiding Word. What's the website? No, our website is, um, you know, www.awpm.org. Hallelujah. Okay. Check out the website. We do have these messages archived, so please go on YouTube. If mm-hmm. you enjoyed this message, check us out on YouTube. We got some other great messages that the Lord has sent through as well. And again, we thank you for your time, and we're releasing you in Jesus' name. First yes. Lady, doing a wonderful job. She's going to pray us out. All right, Father, we just thank you for your word tonight. We thank you for your presence. Father, I just ask that you would fill the home of every believer. If they're in their vehicle, if they're at work, wherever they are, Father, I ask that you would give your tangible presence in that atmosphere, mm-hmm. Father. I ask that you would give them a comfort, God. Give them relief of the extreme temperatures, God. Give them relief of the extreme mm-hmm. emotions oh, in the name of Jesus. Father, help them. Give them reprieve. And mm-hmm. right now, in the name of Jesus, Jesus, that they will be able to become collected again, Father, for the next test, Father, that you have hey, and that they would pass it in the name of Jesus. Because, Father, we are but passing through to get to our promised place in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Love all of you. We love you. We appreciate you. Have a great week. Have a wonderful (laughs) night. We're praying for you. Drop us a line. We're here if you need us. In Jesus' name, you have a wonderful night and y'all be blessed. Love you guys.